Hi, my name is Andre Denis, one of the physicians at the Atlanta Center for Reproductive Medicine. Before starting a cycle of in vitro fertilization, there are a few tests which need to be done. We want to evaluate the sperm, the eggs, and the uterus and their respective abilities to establish pregnancy. To test the sperm itself, the most widely used test is a semen analysis with uh, so-called strict morphology. This means that we look very critically at the shape and size of individual sperm cells. This kind of assessment will give us insight into the sperm's ability to make a pregnancy. A very important area of testing is that of the eggs, and this falls under the name of ovarian reserve testing. Clearly, this is a critical issue because the egg's ability to establish pregnancy will change as women age. This testing consists of blood work. The most uh, widely done are the hormone assessments of follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, as well as an estradiol level early on in the menstrual cycle, typically on day three. Other hormonal assessments in the form of an anti-mullerian hormone assessment can also be done at any time of the menstrual cycle. Occasionally, we'll incorporate what's called a clomiphene citrate challenge test into the ovarian reserve testing as well if there's further insight necessary. The evaluation of the uterine cavity can be done by a variety of different tests. The most widely used tests are a saline sonogram, also called a sonohsg, or a hysteroscopy. Of course, prior to starting IVF, all couples should undergo routine preconceptual testing because that will allow us to make sure that there are no pre-existing medical conditions that may complicate or prevent pregnancy. Uterine cavity evaluation can be done by different assessments. Most widely used tests are the sonohysterosalpingogram, also called a saline sonogram, or a hysteroscopy. The saline sonogram is an ultrasound-based test. To carry out the test, a catheter is placed into the opening of the cervical canal, and sterile saline can then be introduced into the uterine cavity to distend the walls of the uterus. By using ultrasound, we can then see what may be present inside the uterus. As can be visible in the picture in the lower right-hand corner of this slide, there is a filling defect, a gray rounded area inside the black area, black being the saline, which is being instilled into the uterine cavity, highlighting that gray polyp in the inside of the uterus. On the upper left corner is a hysteroscopic view of the uterine cavity. The hysteroscope is a telescope-like instrument which can be placed directly through the cervical canal into the uterine cavity. The hysteroscope will allow us to look directly inside the uterus and we can see the actual fibroid, the lighter colored area which is arising from the bottom wall of that uterus in that picture. In order to carry out hysteroscopy, some local anesthetic is placed in the cervix to prevent any cramping or pain and the whole procedure can be done in a matter of minutes in the office. Before starting an IVF treatment cycle, we would like to do everything possible to optimize the chance of success. There are many interventions that we can and should utilize to achieve this purpose. The first would be to ask the patient to establish a healthy normal weight. Data shows that women who are both over or underweight will have a lower likelihood of success than those that are in the ideal weight range. We therefore would ask people to modify their diet if they're outside of that normal weight range. We ask our patients to limit their use of alcohol and caffeine. This does not necessarily mean complete abstinence. However, moderate use at most is what would be recommended. Excessive use of either of these would be not only counterproductive to IVF success, but to general health issues overall. We ask all patients to stop smoking. Any tobacco use has been shown to be detrimental, has been shown to decrease the likelihood of success, so tobacco should be eliminated completely from daily use. Any chronic illnesses should be optimized in their control. We would ask people who have high blood pressure or diabetes, for example, to optimize their drug regimens such that they are in the best control possible before carrying out the actual IVF cycle in order to make the highest chance of success possible. Lastly, routine exams should be up to date, including the well-known screening tests such as pap smears, mammograms, blood work, and so forth. Overall, the goal is to achieve a healthy lifestyle which will optimize the chance of having a successful IVF cycle, healthy pregnancy, and healthy baby. The link between body size and reproductive outcome is becoming more and more clear. We have learned that being overweight or underweight is associated with decreased pregnancy success rates with in vitro fertilization cycles. 
We also have known for many years that complications during pregnancy, including miscarriage, diabetes, C-section, and so forth, will take place much more frequently if the patient is overweight. We recommend all of our patients to try to establish a BMI of no more than 35 before starting in vitro fertilization. We have learned over the years that women who are obese will have not only a lower likelihood of success, but a markedly increased rate of complications, including anesthesia-related issues uh, at the time of DIAG retrieval. Similarly, we know that to be extremely underweight is detrimental just the same, so we ask those women to try to establish a normal body size as well. There has been a growing body of data in the last few years showing the negative impact of smoking on fertility and reproductive outcomes. We know that women who smoke have a higher risk of miscarriage, tubal pregnancies. The women themselves seem to go through menopause at earlier ages. New data also shows damage to sperm among male smokers. Uh, the impact of smoking on IVF success rates is astounding. Regardless of which partner smokes, whether the female or the male, the success rate is about half of what it might have been had neither one of them smoked. For this reason, we ask all of our patients, both male and female, to stop smoking before they carry out IVF because that simple intervention not only is going to make them healthier overall, but will also double their chance of success.